so welcome to part two and uh, we can say as I said part two I was going to title as how can nothing be something and so and this continues the first talk which talks about um, I was talking about Eckhart Tolle, a speech he made, and uh, a little bit about Ajahn Sumito and his sound of silence. So you have to listen to the first talk to get all of that. And uh, basically, just to give you a quick run over record, Eckhart Tolle was speaking about the silence that underlies all things, and that if one was to not listen to the things, but to listen to the silence, so, uh, that when one is looking in meditation, focusing, that in a way when one looks inside one, looks inside oneself, one is also listening. And so instead of listening to the words in your head, like listening to the birds outside and the noises, one should listen to the silence. And so Eckhart has obviously uh, attained his experience, his direct experience with the cessation of thought. But not the cessation of awareness, which is what he was trying to explain. I think uh, my good friend who I have never met, but I consider my good friend, Alan Watts. Bless him. Uh, might have said, um, that uh, the fear of enlightenment, he gave a teaching on fear of enlightenment. And so because people have a false idea of what cessation of thought processes, which is Nama Dhamma. Dhamma means things. All things in nature are things. All things are Dhammas. Be it a table, an abstract thought, a word, an experience, uh, a rule or a tendency. They're all Dhammas, different kinds of Dhammas. Some have form, some do not have form. Emotions are a Dhamma, kind of Dhamma. Emotions have no form. They're formless, but they are experienced just the same through our perception. We perceive things through filters called khandas. We have five khandas. We have 12 senses. Well, we have six sense receptors, and then we need the ob six objects. For eyes, you need rope. You need a form for the eyes to appreciate. For ears, you need sounds for the ears to be able to hear. So there isn't, apart from the six senses that Western has known, there's actually 12. There's the object for those senses. Without the object, the senses do not arise, or a consciousness of them does not arise. There is no perception of anything. So it's not the 12 senses or the six senses, it's the five candors. That's something we'll be studying in another talk. So how can nothing or things that are no things be something? And how can the silence that underlies everything be listened to as if it was something? Is it not nothing? And Ajahn Sumito's sound of silence, of the stillness of mind, that uh, a sound arises, how can that sound be silence? What a conundrum indeed. But in fact, for he who has heard this silence, there is no conundrum. There is only an ironic, blissfully ironic uh, gladness that it is better than anything that one expected <coughs> and absolutely not what one had expected perhaps there's perhaps a, a silent roar of triumph or of of satisfaction but not not 
a temporary satisfaction such as a satisfaction from a shot of tequila or a kiss from a beautiful girl or uh, these of course are satisfying things but they're impermanent impermanent a thought is impermanent what I'm thinking now what I'll be thinking in a minute what I was thinking a minute ago uh, what I was thinking a minute ago doesn't exist now it's the past the past is imaginary it doesn't exist only the present exists it's also something that Eckhart Tolle talks about being in the now the Buddha talked about it a lot too the future hasn't happened the past is already done take the mistakes you made regret them once learn your lesson and tarry onwards but don't carry them as baggage release yourself from them you have to in Buddhist prayers we have a way of doing this uh, in modern cosmic consciousness or non-religiously non, non conditioned uh, teachings from the teachers who are on the planet in the moment <coughs> of which I consider people like Alan Watts and uh, Eckhart Tolle to be some of the first pioneers if you'd like to speculate I, I, I don't mind to speculate some of my personal beliefs which these are things you cannot prove the Buddha said don't believe anything unless it, you can confirm it or it's valid for you or useful to you and, and proves to be true So, but I'll share this with you uh, I have seen and I know that at certain times uh, there are beings born on earth who may not know it until a certain point in their lives but actually came here decidedly were born here decidedly and that their purpose was to teach or to protect or to preserve the real truth which has been hidden and which is very hidden in this moment. Buddhism is one of the few things which contains it, but Buddhism is a religion and it has its limits as a religion. All religions are impermanent and you cannot cling to it, especially since the teachings of that religion show that clinging is the cause of rebirth in samsara, in, in suffering and illusory existence. So now I would like to leave Eckhart Tolle and Ajahn Sumito with his sound of silence and go to my version of the silence behind all things and the sound of silence of Ajahn Sumito. Uh, before I ever heard the sound of silence, I had a different experience and it had nothing to do with sound. So sound is a portal. It's one of our five candas. And through this portal, through fixation upon that portal, and finding stillness of mind through fixation on that portal, then one can enter the formless realm of the stillness of mind, the, the cessation of thought, which is not only jhana, it is arupa jhana. It is formless jhana. It is not lack of awareness, it is lack of the sense of a self. But it is awareness of awareness of one's own awareness and full awareness of that one's own awareness is something that makes one almost cry out in bliss. In fact, I've heard it happen and it's, I've done it myself. And uh, I've heard Eckhart Tolle do it too. <laughs> uh, he makes these noises as he's talking. If you notice and you listen, if you don't know why and it sounds a bit strange, I can tell you, even though he doesn't tell you himself, it's because as he thinks of it, he slips slowly for a split second or a moment into that state as he's teaching and just 
He can't help it, it exclaims a little exclamation of bliss slips his mouth. You can hear it. Uh, he who knows it, hears it, or sees it. So, one experience so which I did was instead of listening to that sound of silence behind all things and as I said behind all things the space be silence behind all things is tantamount to saying the space between all things which is also silent mm, empty of movement or any kind of uh, um, occupying any space or any 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 space with solidity so it's completely unobtrusive and passive. Um, how about my version? Uh, instead of looking at the things in the room, I decided once when I was a teen to look at the space between all things instead of the things that uh, break up the space. And this is something that the Masons, with the way they do their architecture, and actually it's what lies behind the Wicca, the Wittia, the science of architecture, but the, the Freemasons especially, so they use it in a magical and uh, earth magic, uh, earth science sense to channel and transform and transmit energies, which is a completely different matter of this talk. Uh, I'll talk about that sometime too. So looking at the space between all things, and I mean this with my eyes open at first, I did this. Uh, it involved kind of going cross-eyed and staring and refusing to blink until one's eyes watered and keep staring and staring and staring until one's focus was completely lost and one had let go of ha clinging visually to anything. So this is Gassin, Gassina, one of the, I guess the ten Gassinas were the first ten teachings of the forty Vipassana teachings or the Gamatana teachings of the Buddha. Anyway, they're not taught much in Thailand. There's a reason for it. It makes powers arise. They don't want monks going crazy thinking that they're Superman. That's my theory. Anyway, um, I have never practiced that as gone to a place and practiced meditation to practice kasina or sat with my Kuwe Bhajan and done it. And most of the Kuwe Bhajans I met, the monks, I, didn't, I haven't seen them do any of th those things. Um, but I have done myself, and I did it before I ever heard of Kasina, in which I lay down to past life, because I didn't know it was Kasin, but now I have studied Kasin, and I do do Kasin, I know what it is, and I see it's exactly what I was doing back then, but not what I was doing when I started doing Kasin, rather what I was doing after I had realized what is mastery of Gassin, and that back then, without knowing it, I was doing it better than I was doing it as a well-studied practitioner of Gassin, because I did it naturally without thinking about it. This is how the Buddha also enlightened. He tried what the two Lursi hermits taught him, and he went to Arupajana so many times, and to the realms, the mental realms of infinite thought, and the realm of non-existence non of thought, and the realms beyond that, and there are immaterial mental realms which one must travel higher to be able to even conceive of what they are like or what they are, so I won't go too much into that. What I will go into is that from staring between things, as I said I was doing, I managed to get an external, this is in the, the Tibetan Mahamudra also, to begin by focusing on an impure external object, which is what I had done, and then a pure external object, which I always have found difficult to imagine, what kind of external object is there on this planet which is pure? And then I realized it was the space between things. 
that was the only thing I could find which was pure. And I looked at that, and I stared at it, and I stopped looking or clinging to any of the things that were breaking up that space, which is infinite and actually unbroken. There's just things blocking our view of its endlessness and its emptiness and it, its fullness of luminosity, for it is luminous space. And space is our... I don't believe this, you have to investigate. If I make a statement instead of uh, an explanation which explains or proves it, then you check it out for yourself. But I'll make the odd statement. Mm.